What is going on everybody? Another episode of 4x4 Camping and Adventures and in today's episode another tried and build with this uh, absolute beast owned by this man right here. How are you mate? Not too bad, long time no see. Yeah absolutely buddy. So this is Josh, he owns this uh, bit of a weapon of a trident and uh, in this episode we're going to go right through it, top to bottom, what do you reckon? Let's get to it. Let's get to it eh? Alright mate, here we are, the back of the big rig. The uh, yeah. So take us through it. Take us through, um, I suppose, the setup. What you do. Um, I suppose, what do you do for yourself, mate? What do you, what's your oh, what's your sort of job? Currently a uni student, learning to be an outdoor educator. Got a few little gigs here and there, but uh, I work for the uh, almighty Four Wheel Drive Super Center. Is my current breadwinner. Oh, mate. Uh, you know the top quality products that you can see here. Um, <laughs> ultimate kings. Yeah, ultimate king, man. Ultimate <laughs> king. Uh, but basically, you know, it's a bit of a weekend of touring set up I and mean, i've done a couple bigger trips with it yep um but you know it's a canopy i found on gum tree and yeah gum tree um literally held together by tech screws and dreams yeah um but it gets to where, where you want to go exactly it gets where i want to go um usually have my waco here but just thought i'd bring the old red roads cooler bit of ice taking it back to old school just on the waco slide Perfect. Uh, got everyone's favourite Super Center 1300 drawer with all your. Don't want to knock your beer there. All your, your favourite camping essentials like a fire blanket and a cup. Um, Is that a... I, don't, I know that cup. <laughs> oh, whose cup could that be? Oh, that's a very uh, of... fancy looking cup. What is that? Wood Harry? to food? <laughs> wood to food. Wood, wood to food? Yeah. Um, there's more dirt fell out again. Um, Got my max tracks and stuff like that. Usually up on the roof with a bigger swag, but obviously, you know, this is a weekender. I've sort of got my uh, stretcher bed in there with my uh, sleeping bag. Works a treat. Beautiful. A little table to put the Bevra Genos on. Um, Beautiful. And then uh, we'll show you in a sec, but just the um, 12 volt Kings box in here with the lights wired up, just a bit of a nighttime light and some of the uh, side lights. But uh, yeah, it gets the job done. It's simple, it's easy. Well, this is what I, I mean, we, we spoke about it before. This is what I reckon the budget build, right? Mm. So you got, obviously, the canopy and that kind of stuff off Gumtree. Um, you've got the Waco slide, which is double axe, obviously. Yep. You know, an got SK that off Gumtree as well. Best $75 I've ever spent. Perfect. Uh, I actually bought one of those new, so I know they're worth about 300 <laughs> so it's not a bad deal. Savings. We've got the um, Titan draw, which you obviously would have picked up cheap. We're working at, uh, you know, four drive super center, which is perfect. We've got the old Max tracks, a few treads. Um, obviously, with the video, there'd be some B-roll shots and that kind of thing. But we're pretty well set up in here, man. Like, yeah, what else you need, really? Beer and a tank full of diesel. Yeah, pretty much. That's it. How do you do? How do you do cooking and that kind of thing? What do you take? Cooking. With uh, usually, I cook on a uh, Red Roads fire pit. I really like the taste of something, you know, over the fire. Um, my old man's got that at the moment. He's off camping. Like yeah, Roger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, if not, it's during the middle of summer or something like that, just a um, like a Primus gas stove. Just does the oh, job. Oh, yeah, 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 um, perfect. Don't mind cooking on Transy or if I'm cooking like a spag bowl or something like that, but I really yeah. do prefer, you know, an open fire. You just get sort of those yeah, natural even aromas. Smoky flavor. That, yeah, it makes more, a big difference. More authentic, mm. if that makes sense. And you can, the good thing about camping or, you know, cooking on a fire, you can have, you know, five, ten beers, whatever, and the thing's cooking in the background. You don't really have to do anything. Exactly. So you're just exactly. chilling out, especially doing a roast. Yeah. Oh, don't even get me started on a roast. You know, do two hours and you're cooking and then you're having a few beers and you get the beautiful roast when you're all done. Oh. I think it's about, uh, what is it, 10 beers for one roast? Yeah, about that. Depends how you like your beer. <laughs> <laughs> Probably 10 beers for me. Yeah. <laughs> but, Can't um, for me. <laughs> absolutely, man. But um, no, I reckon she's pretty well set up. We've got a few little lights here and that kind of thing. Um, got double awning? Yeah, double awning. So we've got a two and a half by two and a half ARB sport awning. Picked that up off my old man for a bit of housework. Um, then the old two by three super center on the other side. Yeah, That's nice. just usually what I chuck the swag under, you know, just for that little bit of extra length covers the unit. And then this is sort of the party side. Um, got my dirty gear bag, the uh, crash pad bag on the back. Do like to take all my rubbish out with me. Yep. It's uh, one of those things, the whole leave no trace principles. I, you know, we live in sort of one of the best states in Australia. So yeah, most I'd like to keep it well. that way. Yeah, West 100%, is best. Man, 100%. Ah, oh, beautiful man. She's pretty well set up. And is there anything in there that um, you'd probably change if you had a canopy, or are you talking to the person who owns a canopy or going to buy a canopy? What would you oh. do differently next time? Probably an upright fridge. 
Yeah, okay. Yeah. I, I like the idea of it. Um, I sort of rushed the whole setup. I only got this full setup back in November. Um, I'd probably take my time and redesign it again. Obviously, it was second hand, so the gas struts are sort of all in a bit of a funny place. But yeah, they come in a little bit. Yeah, I mean, you know, but it sort of narrows that width. But again, I think I'd just take my time and redo it again. Um, but you know, for what it is, I've made it work, and yeah, what well, you paid for it, yeah. You can go camping, which is the main thing. Exactly. So. Like some canopies charge six, seven grand, and <sighs> yeah, some here canopies cost old... <laughs> fifteen grand, mate. Like you can you can spend a lot of money in a canopy. The old five hundred dollar jobby. Yeah, that's perfect, mate. <laughs> five hundred bucks is bargain, actually. I suppose the big thing it's alloy as well. Yeah, so alloy of the steel frame, but alloy um, so it keeps the weight down. Yeah, this and it's actually... not the whole tray, which is even better. So with the full setup and the spare tire um, and the tradie roof rack, it actually weighs fifty kilos less than what the original tub weighed. Yeah, nice. Got that all weighed up when I did the conversion. So Beautiful. It means I can take a little bit of extra more gear. Um, yep. And skids are a lot easier. I got off a few skids, mate. <laughs> That's when I go to Mexico, of course. Yeah, <laughs> we we're talking about that. And uh, I suppose big thing for me, um, you haven't got the tub anymore, so you haven't got that huge, big old bottom. Um, so what's the length of this 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 tray? Uh, this one is seventeen hundred. Okay, so the normal tray, I feel like saying it's eighteen fifty. Yeah. Um, so you've chopped off a little bit, which is pretty much bang in line with the chassis it's not to mention as well sort of that undercut you can sort of see with standard tubs without a rear bar you sort of get that anxiety when you go forward driving oh you know i'm going to do a quarter panel or something like that yep. obviously special tritons special yeah. triton yep. <laughs> nothing frightens a triton huh yeah except for the tub yeah nah, the, it's it's yeah if you've got a triton or a stock mn or whatever the the rear hang or my, my rear hang's not too bad now but it's probably one of the worst places yeah, yeah it's, it's most common big. point of damage yep and that's sort of where I went the setup I did, you know, it's a bit more suitable for touring and stuff like that. Love the look of a tub, but I mean, as you can see, it's a Definitely. not a bad little rig. Yeah, no, for sure. Well, let's jump around the other side and um, have a look how you do the um, camping setup. Rock and roll. So, other side of the party canopy, mate. This is uh, sort of more the uh, business end of things, the old store shed. But there we go. Nothing fancy going oh, on over here. A few little stickers up there, mate. Oh, who's oh. that in tents off roads? Oh, oh. Hey, Alex in tents off road. Yeah, you going? Gear? Bit of Jimmy. Road, bit of everything, mate. Yeah, a couple of places I've been, you know, Steep Point, love the Overlander Roadhouse, it's sort of gateway to adventure, some would say. Good um, spot. We'll go camping and overlanding, shout out to Azza. A double sticker of the Overlander Roadhouse. Yeah, I liked it so much, I had to get to. Thanks, 4 by 4 in there. Awesome, man. Love the boys. Yeah, no, they're always always doing their big trips. Party bugs. <laughs> new 79, it's a bit of a beast. So, mate, uh, I mean, pretty, pretty simple setup, which is good because simplicity is the key, I think, for camping. That's it. So what have we got here? June, stretch. drive, stretcher tent. Yeah, stretcher tent does the job. It's just a single person, keeps you off the ground. Um, good during winter. I mean, you know, I camp down dwelly ways quite a fair bit and it gets wet on the ground there. You all, yeah. all hate rolling up a wet swag. Love a good double swag, but just a bit too much for a weekender. Yeah, yeah, Quick sure. and easy, waterproof. Perfect. Um, recovery box, plenty dirty because, you know, it's a Triton. Yeah, um, plus it gets used. Exactly, exactly. Get that out of here. Um, usual stuff, blanket, snatch strap, All the shackle. Stuff, bit yeah. of everything, mate. Awesome, man. All the stuff that you sort of need to get a Land Cruiser out. So that's pretty much just your recovery box and all that kind of thing. That's it, yeah. Quick and easy to get to. I mean, once you're stuck, you're sort of stuck. I'm pretty cautious with those sorts of things. I do like to keep my investment safe. Yep, um, it's up high as well. So it's exactly. Water in there, which is good. Exactly. Um, what do you got there? That is my Camper Royale sleeping mat. Damn. Does the job, just goes inside the stretcher tent. Roger, roger. 110 mil of comfort. Yeah. And the uh, almighty uh, Wanderer camp chair, I've had that as long as I can remember. Mate, the, I'm a uh, Wanderer camp chairs. Mate. Mine, mine are going for like four or five years now as well. Does the job, man. I've back in the day. Back in the day, man. Yeah. Obligatory uh, yeah, bottle opener, got to have them. And, Definitely. That's really about it. I've sort of got plenty of space in there to throw whatever I, you know, I've done some pretty big trips, chuck a big table in, um, yep. axe and whatnot. I sort of want to go in and make something out of ply and some actual shelves with a couple more sort of drawers and stuff like that. I do I like, like the... Like, yeah, or, yeah, yeah, that's the thing. So then you can sort of say, just pull that box out, that's all you need, or 
yep. place it was something else. It's kind of a pain to carry firewood sometimes. Yep. Um, we do have this space here. In which you I do. Of, I do. That's use. the thing. I mean, I sort of thought about bringing that spare wheel to the middle um, and then sort of two jerry cans either side, but, you know, yeah, what you money. <laughs> yeah, money's a big thing. Uh, exactly. And exactly. You look, yeah. I always, always think when you're doing mods is, is it going to make your life any easier and how much does it cost? Exactly. If it's going to cost a hell of a lot of money, but it makes your life a hell of a lot better, then it's probably mm -hmm. worth it. But if it's going to cost you a fortune and it's going to be just okay. Just well, helps a little bit. the point, yeah. right? So, um, yeah, no, you're probably on the money there, mate, with uh, being cautious with, you know, just spending money on like moving jerry cans around and kind of stuff. Exactly. But you, got, you do have a like, secondary spare wheel carry here. Yeah. Um, carry the one spare or two? Just the one spare one. for the time being. I don't know, the Falcons are on the cheaper end, but being a uni student doesn't really help. Yeah. Um, but in saying that, I mean, I've been run these for two years. I've never, ever had a flat. So They're two years old. Two years old. Yeah, they've got good grip on them too. Mm-hmm. No, I've taken all. them down to five PSI before. Held on with dear life. Oh, they were slick and gripping, man. They, they, <laughs> they no issues yeah, so I highly rate the Falcons. Yeah, nice. Well, we'll get into that when um, we're talking about the tyres, but they are a 33, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, beautiful. No, no stress at all, man. So um, I suppose future things where you're going to do a few little extra things, just maybe put a little canopy or something up yep. there or a little um, shelf or whatever. Put more of a shelf, some yep. more dedicated sort of things. I'd like to consolidate sort of this tub. I mean, a space case, they're quite a large, heavy object. I'd sort of like to say I'd want recovery gear about yay big. I used Perfect. to actually have it in toolboxes. Oh, but yeah. I didn't like the toolboxes where they were. They weren't sealing. Plus, I like yeah. to look a bit better. Yep. Um, but, yeah, I sort of want to get rid of that and sort of have some more dedicated just pull-bin sort of things where, you know, I can just chuck a few more camp essentials over here, chairs and whatnot across. Like a camping box. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly. Right. Something you can just pull out, somewhere you can keep chairs permanently. Yeah, because it's your daily. You just you don't want to drag this around with you all day, exactly. every day, because you're just adding fuel. Exactly. So you're just chucking the garage and happy day. That's yeah, it. no, nice, man. I mean, as I said, it's a very, very uh, simple setup, but you go everywhere with it, man. Simplicity. So, Keep it simple, stupid. Yep. That's my rule I live by. Actually, one thing you could do here, if you wanted to, is um, you can actually put a netting here. I thought about it. I thought about it. I was thinking about it. But more if you know, I was closing that, then things start to get, you know, bumped around and yeah, whatnot. Yeah, yeah, roger. Plus, it is a flat canopy, so they do get really hot in the middle of summer. You uh, cannot touch this. Yeah, roger, roger. So... But, you know, do like the thought. I think it's more of a... I'd probably put some more insulating panel in there or something like that just to bring that temperature down. But, yeah, again, yeah, sure. money. Yeah, it all comes down to money, mate. And obviously, we've got the King's Awning on this side with a little 2.5 by 2.5 on this roof rack, which I'm assuming is a... Another Super Center. King's roof rack. It looked, little, I was going to say, it looked like a King's yeah, roof rack. Yeah, tradie rack. I think it's 50 kilos of steel, but I think they're rated for like 350 kilos. So, I mean... It yeah, should be able to carry a bit. I mean, best thing is when you park up at the beach, you can get a couple of the boys sitting up there with an esky and a beanbag, and I mean, it's... Yeah, have a, have a few beers. Exactly, exactly. Morning comes out, three metres, chuck the swag underneath, happy days. You have room for days, mate. Yeah, no, nothing wrong with that, mate. And as I said, this is all about budget, right? That's it, that's it. It's all about getting out there, which is probably a big thing for you watching at home. You don't need to spend 30, 40 grand on a car to go camping. I used to go camping in a, in a VL Commodore, so... You don't need to do it. I've seen people do it in the gets, so... Yeah, like... If they can do it, so can you. Like you look at all those tourists that uh, get around in a van that's probably on its last legs and using a little gas boiler to Super do Super Center's biggest food. clients. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, probably Super Center's biggest clients. But, um, yeah, you don't need a lot. But, I mean, this is bang on. Like, you got canopy, you got a tray, you got all your stuff where you can put your wood. you got the canopy on there, you can put all your stuff in there. It keeps it nice and sealed up. you got a secondary... You do everything you need. I've spent the money where I need to spend it. I've spent it on stuff like wheels, you know, yep, suspension tires, and suspension. a bull bar. Yep. Live in WA, especially the Southwest. You know, it's our conversation, yeah. It's, yeah. it's one of those things. You want to protect your investment, um, sort of spend money where you can and look for those bargains. I mean, I've had the tub for two years and saw this come up and snatch it straight away for 500 bucks and oh, a month or two price. of hard work. Schmick. You really can't complain with that price. Like, no. When I was looking at the old idea of doing a tub or a canopy, I was looking at canopies and the cheapest quote I got, probably for something like this, was like two grand. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's you a lot of money where, for something that's empty. Where's your money going with that two grand? You look yeah. at the build quality of some of those things. Yeah, it's, it's some of the real manufacturers, you know, not that great. And then I thought, well, 
how else can you do it? That's uh, not going to cost a fortune, and exactly. hence why I went the way I went when I did. So, that's wicked, man. Awesome. All right. Well, let's um, let's go more towards the uh, interior. We'll have a gander in there and see what's going on. Nothing wrong. All right, mate. So, uh, the interior. This is the place where it all happens. Right. Place where the magic happens. Doesn't help being six foot five in a small car, but yeah, we I'm get it done. Yeah, there, mate. It's, um, six foot one. So I know how how cramped these cars can yeah. be when you're a little bit tall. <laughs> um. What but, are you down yeah. here, mate? Well, it obviously is an auto. Don't mind the auto. I do have that Tiptronic feature. Um, apart from interior mods, not really a whole lot. Um, obviously, Chevron dash mat with a uh, Grab Me Gear uh, dash organizer does the job. Cape torch and screwdriver for the hitch and that sort of thing in the back there. Oh, um, Mate, love Jimmy's products. Obligatory Cobra does have, the job. Got to have that, mate. Got to have it. Got to have it. I got Shalissa here. She's just more or less the car icon with a little tequila sombrero. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, my old uh, blacked out jobby of the old Supercenter VMS with the reverse camera wired up. Okay. Um, obviously, because I can't see out the back of the canopy because it's fully blacked out. I've got a reverse camera just above the license plate that when I go into reverse here, that turns on. Obviously, oh. you've got all my maps and stuff like that. Speed, you know, helps the treat. Yep, yep, yep. Um, obviously, you've got the so old... Just hang. So yeah. that, that works all the time? Yeah, yeah, all the time. Okay. So, I mean, obviously, I can turn that on and whatnot, and then as soon as I go into reverse, it sends the cable, does okay. the job. Yeah, nice. And how do you, so, oh, because you can't see behind you anyway, because it's no. canopy. Yeah, no, perfect. So, it's all, all wired up. I mean, it's more, I've got the clear view, so that sort of covers 80% of what I need. It's just sort of those, you know, little poles that I can't see behind me. Yeah, nice. Um, but great to uh, annoy your mates as well, because I've got these big reverse lights as well. Yeah. Um, I mean, sort of moving on. Um, obviously you've got patches and whatnot up the top there, uh, adventure overland and two go camping and overlanding patches. Yeah, good storm. Um, time. yeah, love them, man. Love them. Got the, uh, GME. 80 channel? Uh, 80 channels, like the TX 350, something yeah, okay. like that. I've got that paired up with the 6.6, 1.2 meter, uh, whip. Yep, beautiful. Um, obviously cheap as chips, uh, Sony head unit. We were talking Planned about on, it before because yeah. um, you were thinking about upgrading to, well, maybe uh, upgrading to the one I've got. Maybe a doubled in. Doubled in? Because you've got um, the uh, trip computer. And one of the questions in Declan's video is the trip computer, where they put it from um, when they put the double din in. So if you were going to put a double din in, where are you going to put that trip computer? Trip computer would probably go back down here. Um, yep. does take a little bit of modification, obviously, because that fascia plate is straight designed for here. Um, so it would take a little bit of wiring to get through there and it's sort of ripping the whole dash out. It's a serious weekend project, but yeah. I mean, you know, if it's something that's worth it to you, then go for it. I'm, I'm really happy with this. Does Bluetooth music. I'm happy. Just change it. Off I go. Um, obviously cause I've got my maps up here. I sort of just chuck my phone on the dash if I really need it. Yep. Um, apart from other mods i've got the super center 40 dollar uh, seat covers the old uh what is it the um neoprenes yeah wetsuit wetsuit material yeah. Yeah, the old wetsuit material they're two and a half years old going strong haven't yeah. had an issue since that's the job mate what um need? best thing is this is a glxr model i do have that uh rear window so at the back when i have these windows down and sort of get that nice uh blow through um and i've got a twin arb compressor under the passenger seat which is triggered by that switch beautiful so it's just on a switch that you use. Yeah. So do you have an outlet on the car? Or do you just yeah, the outlet I've got an outlet and the nine liter tank sitting at the back of the car. Cool. Well, I'll get some B-roll footage and you can see it obviously in the video, but um, no, it's awesome, man. Little nine liters are good as well because I've got the um, airbag man, one of mine. Yep. And I reckon, I reckon it does make a difference when you pump your tires up. Oh, 100%. Especially because I've got one of those little attachments, sort of like one of those dusting ones. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, if I open up the canopy, there's a bit of dust or something in yeah. there. Or more or less, I want to, you know, use that rear tailgate as a bit of a tabletop to dust it off. Off I go. Or just a quick punch up of air for some reason or whatever. I mean, handy to have that tank. No, that's good, man. I reckon, uh, I mean, the yeah, any car that uh, does probably big trips or you're doing a lot of sand driving, which obviously WA, we do heaps. Yeah. Um, yeah, onboard air is something that I cannot recommend enough. No. Nah. I mean, look, so I've, I've, I've done my years of the, you know, air compressors, you plug straight onto your battery, um, but I can't go wrong past something that's hardwired. It's just simple as you pull up, flick the switch, go to the back of the car, you're done in three four minutes off you go again it's not farting around with pulling the bolt no but nothing to say anything's wrong with that it's just uh my personal opinion easier gets the job done quicker more time yeah. at the pub having a beer 
No, absolutely, man. And um, I mean, I, I love beach driving. It's probably my go-to. So if you're going from beach to beach, because not every beach in WA you can just drive, you know, for days. You uh, sometimes need to go back onto the blacktop. So yeah, if it. you're trying to pump up and you're doing that maybe three times in a day, yeah, you can uh, definitely add some time if you're doing it 15 minutes every time. So exactly, uh, yeah, no, a little bit of time saved. And it's, uh, it's the dual compressor, did you say? Yeah, dual compressor. So, so they take next to no time. To does my anyway. 33s in just over a minute. Yeah, perfect. 18 to 42. Yeah, no, I cannot complain with that. And the auto, you had any dramas with it? It's all no. been pretty, pretty happy days? Never had an issue with the auto. Oh, I've had a few AT temp warnings, um, but again, that's sort of down at Wanner Up Beach in Bustleton, you know, beach, right? real high revs, 42 PSI. Never had an issue. I mean, plays everything with the big girls, so. Yeah, happy days. Also, I've got that Tiptronic, so. Yep. That was Go a job. In. Never had an issue. Um, would like to, next car will probably be a manual, but in saying that, again, for the control you get out of an auto, you can't mm. fault it, especially with these. I know the older models didn't have that Tiptronic, which gets a bit how you're going, but... Yeah, 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 for sure. That's probably the best thing you can have in a new four-wheel drive. Exactly. Tip Tiptronic, because you don't, you don't have that clutch stop on the beach and that kind of thing. And or even if you're going up um, hill climbs, if you need to get into second for whatever reason, it's you can just... so stay. much easier. And you, uh, you don't have to take your foot off the accelerator. You don't lose too much momentum. Yeah, you have a lot more control. Absolutely, man. Is this this got the super select like mine as well? You can put it into four drive yep. on normal roads. Yep. Yeah. Beautiful, man. What's with the old little little rings and that kind of thing? Oh, you know, um, straight off three years out of school, so I more or less kept the bands I got at levers and stuff like ah, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, festivals and stuff I've been to. Good memories, more or less. Just a positive experience every time I drive the car. Yeah, nice, man. Nice. Beautiful, mate. Well, you've got the whole thing set up, and um, it, it's pretty similar to mine. Um, you thinking about doing any gauges or anything in the future? Or? Oh, I'd probably go for some pillar pods and something like that. But again, if I went for a you know double din head unit, I'd have something with like an OBD2 port reader. I do have a scan gauge yep. that I have with me just in case, just one of those $80 super center jobbies. Um, Little EDS. But it's more or less with the car. I've got everything I need and nothing I don't need. Yeah, perfect, you know, man. It's, and I said, I reckon with these cars, especially Tridents, if you're, you know, fluffing around doing an interior of them, you know, you don't need much because they're a pretty comfortable car. I just drive yeah. around on a daily basis. But um, obviously, if you're a bit tall, it can get a bit, hey, yeah. gone. Um, but you don't need much. I got a little double din head unit, um, two-way radio, and you're pretty much there. As long as you got music and a, yeah, and a windscreen to look button. out of. Got to have your tunes, and then you're ready to rock and roll. And I think the dash mode's a big thing because I know these dashes can crack. Yeah, I mean, it, you can see underneath it. Gets a bit dirty. Yeah, but so. uh, I do know these are notorious for cracking, so um, I reckon a dash mode's definitely uh, worthwhile. Not as bad as a GU. <laughs> <laughs> they crack for sure, eh? And uh, you got a little sunglasses holder up there. That's all pretty much standard spec. Yeah. Nothing. Day, I mean, only thing I'd complain is sort of lights that come with these as standard. I mean, mm. I'd replace them for LEDs, but again, yep. more yeah, or less just make a big difference. one of those things on the whiteboard that I just haven't got around to yet. Yeah, that's it, mate. That's it. And you you think about doing a rooftop console or? Not with my height. I yeah. think it's more or less one of those things that sit about there. That's I sort of lose that peripheral, and then if you start doing a bit of those uh, wombat that's holes, why I, didn't do mine. I just reckon you smack your head, and it stops pretty much a lot of what you're seeing outside. So I mean, if I was going to do something, I'd do like the elastic bands on the back or some sort of mm. cargo rack back there. But yep. I mean, I've got a dual cab, but most of the time it's just me and the missus driving yeah. around, so. If you're in the back seat, I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, you've got heaps of room anyway. You can chuck all your stuff on there. That's you can fit a double swag on the back of these anyway. Yeah, so. I'll just chuck my clothes bags and my sleeping bag in the back there because I've got plenty of room in the canopy. Yeah. It's just more or less somewhere that climate controlled and stable. Yeah, no, keep all your stuff dry, man. That's the way to do it. Awesome, man. Well, uh, let's go have a look under the, under the engine bay and see what's going under there. Let's go. All right, mate. Uh, engine bay. I see you've got the um, go faster red rocket on the top of it. Extra 50 horsepower. Obviously, yeah. needed. So now I've got 51 horsepower. <laughs> All the horsepower in the world. Um, probably best thing I've done in this engine bay. Canaan air filter. Yeah, okay. Best thing I've put in the car. Yeah, I had one of those before I went to a pod. Yep. Yeah. If I, you know, if I went a custom setup, I probably would go a pod filter. I do like the uh, idea of that. Mm. Um, but, you know, again, for what is it, 110 bucks, I think I paid for it. Does the job, 100% more airflow, save a bit of money. Yep, get the um, recharge kit you can clean them yourself with. Exactly. Um, dual battery setup over by you. Yep. Um, looks like a bit of a spaghetti mess, but, you know. Mate, that's a stride life. Yeah, you just really haven't got enough room to um, put your cabling. Like, I think, look, if I'm 
being honest, I am going to relocate it. I was honestly thinking about doing two 138 amp hour batteries underneath the tray since I've got, you know, oodles of room under mm. there. Yep. Um, but obviously you've got the uh, Red Arc Smart Isolator up the back there. Yep. Um, and then I've got a 90 amp hour AGM, which is that black one up the back. This guy here? Yep. Yeah, nice. And you've got your Sentry. I've got the same starting battery, actually. Good, so uh, mine isn't sealed, unfortunately. Mine's a um, top-up one, but uh, bloody good batteries. Yeah, no, they haven't had an issue so far. Um, obviously, you've got all your isolators and fuses and whatnot in the corner there. Yeah, beautiful, um, man. It is a dirty motor, but... Mate, hey, it I means you actually take it off-road, which is uh, crazy. We, uh, yeah, we, we have our fair share of adventures. Obviously, you can't tie shine a motor, but... Hey. <laughs> If you go to a car dealer, they can. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> I'll pay them to mess it up. <laughs> exactly. So, standard piping? Standard have had, piping. Have you had any of these split yet? No. Haven't had a split? 228 k's in, haven't had a single split. I haven't had... I had one issue with this car its entire life, which was the um, boost controller. Okay, yeah. Uh, I got a little rock in the vacuum line, cooked that straight away, went into limp mode, yep. um, got it sorted out the next day at Mitsubishi and... Happy days. That that's it. I've it is left alone for a reason. I mean, I've I want to tune it in the future, but I think there's probably a few more things I'd rather do first than tune it. Sort of with that age, yeah. Yeah, yeah get sure. the car to sort of where it wants to be. I mean, it is a older vehicle now. I think it's the sort of thing I get plenty of power with it as I do now. I don't have any issues on the sand or anything like that. It's yeah, they're pretty potent vehicles from yeah. factory. Thirty uh, threes do take away a little bit of that yeah. power, but um, oh yeah. But they're still potent enough to do it. I'd rather have to. grip over power. Yeah. I mean, it still gets up and boogies. Um, still does what you need to. Exactly. Nothing frightens a triton, but it is a bit of missy, so. <laughs> it's definitely a bit of missing. Um, so, no catch can, I can see. No. <laughs> because, any reason? Or Just haven't, haven't put it? one in yet. Um, <laughs> yeah. I want to, but again, you know, money, money, money. Yeah, yeah, for sure, um, for sure. I think it was probably easier to get a three dollar can of red spray paint than it was to get a catch can. Catch can. <laughs> I mean, it's a uh, you know, flash as, um, yeah, but looks... definitely on the books. I think you know, come Christmas time, when I pick up a few more shifts and stuff like that, it'll be one of those things. I just haven't had the time. I mean, yeah, yeah. The most this car does is really driving to uni or to work, yeah, just three okay. or four days a week, and you know, and then even weekend then, adventure. It's, yeah, and then you sort of weekend adventures when I get the time off. I think it's just. I haven't had an issue so far. <laughs> Probably not the right way to think about it. But <laughs> well, uh... actually, um, because it's got the amount of Ks on it, you could probably... Have you ever had an intake clean yet? Yeah, I've, I've had two. Okay. So one when I first got the car and then one about 10,000 K ago. Yeah, okay. Yeah, for sure. And it's so not, not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Nah, they're, they're not too bad. Um, do you have the EGR blocked? Nope. Okay, so, it's, blocked, so no. it's a full standard system. Okay, that works. So motor you, has not been touched. So. Okay, all right. So if you were going to um, put a cash can on it, let's say in the next fifty thousand k's, because you've just had a clean on it, you're probably going to be pretty safe. Yeah. Um, and yeah, obviously if you can get a not an EGR delete, but like the cable like I've got on yeah. mine, which will um, stop it from opening. But at this amount of age in the car, you might be barking up a tree that you don't really need to, if you know what I mean. Because I, mean, I drive it like a grandpa most of the time, so yeah. I mean. You know, when I'm taking off in the morning, I wait till it's actually even warm before I do all the right things. Yeah, it's you know, it's a you know, I pay for it, so I sort of want to look after it. Um, yep. But in saying that, obviously, when the time comes, I do love to give it a bit of right boot. Yeah, yeah, for sure, mate. That's, that's the that's what you're building for. Does does love a good three thousand RPM? <laughs> they sure it's do. It's a bad day to be a sand dune when this comes out. <laughs> <laughs> they they actually really well perform on the sand dunes. Yeah. They're actually really light and they get up there no dramas. Yeah. I mean, up at Will Binger, I've seen, you know, 80 series and all that sort of stuff and patrols struggle up to get some of these dunes where I sort of just, again, could be manual or auto sort of thing, but I just hook up at snorkel, air filter, you know, Happy plenty day. of grip and 16 PSI and you sort of just go for it. You pick your line right, you, yeah, everything comes food, together. Range. You're right. cruising, mate. You're cruising. does chew a bit of fuel, though, on the 33s. I think I'm sitting about... 13.9 when I came down. Okay, what are you going to have a tank? Cage was. I'm just curious to compare it to mine. If I drive it sensibly between five and six. Yeah, it's about if, if I have a bit of fun, probably more four to five. Yeah, um, same, pretty much the same as mine. Yeah, I mean, obviously it does settle down. If I've got stuff on the roof or I'm doing a headwind or anything like that, but best I've ever seen this car 
um, like straight after a service is like 10.9. Yeah, okay. I yep. think when I first got it, I did like 9.1. Right. Okay, when it was Three years stock. ago, tiny wheels, nothing on the car. Yeah, yeah. When she was fully stocked, they um they don't use any fuel. Once you add yeah. weight onto them, they start chewing it pretty quick. But yeah, probably That's about the same good. as mine. Probably 500, 500, 600. Yeah. If you're driving it like a grandma. Mine uses a little bit more because it's tuned, but... Yeah, five, six hundred. I think that'd be something I'd do. I'd, I'd go into a tune, but again... The ECU rear map? Yeah. I'd recommend it. Yeah, I've heard really good things about them. I mean, I wouldn't do something necessarily reaper crazy. Probably yeah. something very close to what you've done in terms of Yeah, it's of put power. 25 in it. I mean, it's, you're, only, you're only pushing up by 7 PSI, so it's, yeah. it's nothing these cars can't handle. No. I mean, I've been testing that. I've had that for 27 PSI for 60,000 Ks now, so... They um they can handle it as yeah. long as you um give a nice cold air coming in. Um, I'd recommend an intercool upgrade, but not so probably as much as like a plasma man, yeah. but just something a little bit better than the A4 sheet that's in there. Yeah. <laughs> um, because they're not the biggest intercooler on these things. But um, but yeah, no, they're they're pretty happy motors. You just look after them; they'll last. That's for sure. Well, they do the job. I mean, no complaints of yet. I mean, it's not a V8, but yeah, don't need it to be a V8, do you? No, you just need to get to your campsite, right? That's it, that's it. Gets and the uh, big 6DB, this massive GME. Mate, I love that thing. Probably top five mods I've done on the car. Um, yeah. More or less, it is a bit of a wank factor. Um, but I love the signal that comes out of it. I do have a little short 2.2 that I can slap on if I really want to. Because these are scroffs, aren't yeah, they? Yep. Yeah, you literally undo, um, I think it's a little 3 mil. Piece, whatever. Yeah, that top piece comes off and you screw it back on. But, I mean, Perfect. living here in WA... Yeah, it's big distance. You, you get so. no hills. Um, yep. Love that thing. Super stable. Sort of a real good indicator for the car because I know the car sits at 2.15. That sits at 2.25. So I know, you know, sort of my levels if I go into a car park. Mm. Um, no, perfect, Yeah, mate. love it. No, awesome, man. I mean, there's obviously not um, a huge amount happening under here because you obviously left it pretty stock. But I suppose, next thing, let's talk about uh, your front end, man. Yeah, we've got the uh, MCC Falcon Bar. This thing picked it up from uh, Mac 4x4 and My Re. Ashley and the boys do a wicked job. Um, standard run-of-the-mill bar, pretty much. I mean, you know, I do a fair bit of work down south. I do see family down in Busso quite often. Um, has had its fair share, uh, fair share of roof strikes, unfortunately. <laughs> um, but it's still holding up. So. Exactly, exactly. I mean, Doing you can. It's been uh, what eighteen months, and there's you know little minor sort of touches of rust and stuff like that, which I mean I can go over and fix. Um, haven't had an issue to date. Um, got the old Light Force HIDs on the front there. They did the job for what I need it for. Obviously, you got my light bar up on the top there, just for that pockets of spread. Um, yep. Got the old Super Center Dominator X winch. Still um, holding up. Yeah, still holding up. I think I've only used it. Uh, we've got it when I had the uh, motor uh, winch put, uh, bull bar put on. Yeah, used okay. it three times. Used it to put a roof rack on. Yeah, used okay. it as a yeah. rope swing. And then used it to pull a mate out at Will Binger. Um, <laughs> it's doing its job then. Exactly, exactly. I get every three, four weeks, you know, I pull it out, run it out, re-service it. I re-grease it with marine grease when I went through. Um, if I'm doing any sort of big sort of mud holes, which you'll probably see, yeah, with some of the B-roll, um, obviously give it a good spray with some water displacement stuff, especially around the seals. Did um, oxen that? Yeah, I mean, it's a super center winch. You get what you pay for, but yep. You know, we're 18 months down the track, haven't had an issue since, so. Mate, you can't complain. I mean, <laughs> if it's doing, I suppose if it recovers you three or four times, you've got your money back. So exactly, you guess, so. exactly. That's the thing. I think it paid for my mates straight away. Oh, yeah, got a case out of that one. Uh, so paid for itself right there and there. You get a beer, so Everybody beer loves a beer. <laughs> it's got a big old hook on it. Is this yeah, factory hook. Factory hook, factory hook. I know big super, old hook. they've changed to the smaller hooks. I would go like a factor 55, but I guess yeah, it's one of those sort yeah. of things that we talked about earlier. Is it really worth that sort of expense? It looks um, nice, but... Yeah, I know. It does look nice. I think you know, if I was going to real, you know, go into the car, you know, long term, I'd sort of yeah, do yeah. that sort of thing. But again, I'd do, you know, probably motor works, you know, intake, uh, big front mount in the pool or something like that just to really take it to that next level yeah, um yep. obviously a winch hook's probably not the most important thing i mean <laughs> exactly. you could do a shackle and it'd still do the same job yeah exactly i, I mean think i think those factor winch hooks are like 300 bucks or something which i was is thinking more 150 of... but yeah we'll scratch that now yeah, <laughs> I, I, I think i remember looking at it last i think they're in 
they're pretty expensive. Maybe they're not 300 bucks. I might be throwing out some crazy numbers there, but wouldn't be it's, surprised. It's probably about half the price you whinge. American so, I mean, made. Yeah, it's a lot of money just to throw at something that really isn't going to make nah. any difference. So for the amount of times I've used it, yeah, it more or less a trophy piece on the front of the car, but yeah, yeah. I mean, what can you do? Can't complain, mate. And big old HID. Yeah. You, did, you did talk about them before. I so did. On, how, how old are they, mate? Oh, I think these are pushing 16, 17 years old. Found them from an old man in the store shed. So, I mean, I've just I've placed the globes in them, so they get about three, 400 metres out of them. Not a bad little uh, investment. Had the old king spotties, but as I said, a kangaroo had otherwise about them. Um, what are they, they didn't break, like, you know, that one car they took a photo of and said the king's lasted better than the bull bar? Nah, they, they cracked the lenses on them. Um, <laughs> But in saying you know, they're the old original King's Light, so uh, I mean, yep, yep, I think that was only on the most recent ones. So yeah, okay. yeah, the they stood ones. through thirteen others. Yeah, um, but in saying that, you know, I love the look of these big ten-inch. They're fat. They look huge on the car. They stick out more than they probably should. But they're a great looking light for what they are. Um, I'd probably go something like a HTX two or some like Steadies or something yeah, like that next. Yep, yep. HTX two is a good light. That's but for sure. again, you know, six seven hundred dollars for Steadies and yeah. upwards of four figures for light force. It sort of comes down to how much night driving am I doing? Um, how much are you really going to use them? Exactly. That's the big thing, I think eh? it's maybe once a month if I'm lucky. Yeah. Well, you spend this. This is what we were sort of talking about before. You spend six hundred bucks or thousand bucks or some lights depending on what light you get and that thousand dollars could go towards new tires exactly half a suspension lift exactly side steps roof rack canopy in your case you've got a canopy of the country there are so many th better things you can buy um and i suppose that's why people buy cheap spotties you know and that's the thing you weigh it up between what you got to do and sort of where you want to take the build i mean if you've got a duck nuts 200 series and you know it's that final piece then you know the creme de la creme go for it yeah but if you're just building up your very first Holden Colorado, yeah. spend that money on a good set of tires, you're going to get a lot more grip. Even a thousand bucks, locker. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah, 100%, Easy. mate. There's definitely um, better ways of spending your money, that's for sure. So, yeah, no, awesome, man. And uh, bash plate underneath? What's... Bash plate, the good old, I think it's what Maxi, you got there, mate? <laughs> Maxi Track, uh, Maxi three track. mil from Repco. Beautiful. Mate, did the job, took me about 30 minutes to install. Um, Four mil? Yeah, four mil. Yep. Not three mil. I was going to say um, most of four mil. Yeah, they're, they're a solid bash plate. I mean, I like the orange colour. gives that little pop to the car. Yeah, yeah. For um, sure. But not bad for what they are. I think if I was going to redo them, I'd probably spray paint them black then. Yeah. Um, okay. Just, you know, for a cleaner look. I mean, I've got a little bit of red up the top there. Obviously, my Go Fast cover here. Um, not many people see that, though. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the bonnet's never up on this car. <laughs> Bits are missing. That's it. That's it. Uh, no, awesome, man. I mean, as I said, the whole point we wanted to go through this particular build is everything you can do on this car, I mean, half the stuff you can do yourself, yeah. but everything is done to a smart price and the fact that you actually want to go camping and off-roading and that kind exactly. of thing. Exactly. So, um, everything you're saving, like the money you're saving on bits and bobs is better money you can use on actually going to put towards diesel, or tires or whatever. Exactly. Um, which allows you to go further off road, which is what it's all about. I That's, mean, yeah. most of this stuff, I've done most of it myself. I'm quite fortunate to have a few friends and stuff like that yeah. in the four wheel drive industry. I think the only thing that, the only couple of things that have been actually installed was the bull bar professionally and the suspension. Um, Same got as the, me, pretty much. Yeah, I got my tires rotated and balanced and that sort of thing. But the canopy, um, my mate helped me lift on with his crane at work and Perfect. off we went. It's, I suppose it's a good segue to go into your tyres, mate, since we're talking about these uh, big rubber hoops. So easy. Let's get into it. No problem. So, mate, the big Wild Peaks. The old Wild Peaks, Falcon uh, Wild Peak ATs, got the AT3s. Um, best tyre I've ever had. I mean, then my second set of tyres on the car, so it's like a 50-50 thing. Um, <laughs> but, I mean, for an all-terrain, I cannot fault them. They're a 285 75 16, uh, so 33. 33. Yep. Um, I mean, these are nearly two years old still got great treading yeah i've had these everywhere had them in rock sand i've never lost traction once um hands down best type i've ever put on the car i think this would be like in the top three mods you could do to a triton it's a new set of tire and rims um 
obviously they came with the factory uh, alloy rims, which were a bit how you go in, in the um, 17s. So oh, yeah. Going down to a smaller rim, get a fatter sidewall on the car, you get that nice look. Yep. Um, quietest tyre, decent little uh, side profile as well. But I, there's not really all much you can say about tyres. They're just a... Big rubber thing that keeps yeah. you on the road. That's it, that's it. I What's, mean... What would you say the offset's on your, on your rims? Neg 10, I believe. Yeah, okay. It's just off from um, what factory comes into play because I barely scrub up the front. Yeah, yeah, a little okay. bit, um, but that's probably due to the aftermarket flares on it. Yep. Um, but in saying that, you know, keep in line with the vehicle, so I'm quite happy. I haven't had to go sort of full cut snake uh, spec. Um, but yeah, I love them. I rave about them to everybody that ever sees them. I'd probably go some like Toyos or something like that next. Yep. Um, but I'm going to run these until they die pretty much. I yeah, still got can't fault them at all. And, Push comes to shove, I will buy a next set and I'll probably put on my next car too. Yeah, yeah, for sure, mate. No, I mean, I'd love to try the mud. Experience with them. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they just they grip hard, keep me on the ground, keep me from doing any sort of skids. So yeah, no, perfect, mate. <laughs> Could just be a Triton thing though. Yeah, they just don't do skids, <laughs> <laughs> uh, especially with thirty threes. And they're not heavy either. I mean, I can lift them by myself. I think they're like a 30, 40 kilo tire. So yeah, perfect. From factory, especially those old rims, they were oh, so heavy. The alloys? Yeah. Yeah, okay. They were, uh, I much prefer the steel rim. A lot are they, easier. Are they 16th? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. They're a uh, King's steel rim. Yep. Yeah, Not Super Santa King's, King's. King's, King's. Yeah. yeah. Proper King's Good rim. Good King. <laughs> um, I just love the look of them. I know people go, you know, your, your flash fuel rims and stuff like that. And they look good on Y62s and whatnot. But yeah. You can't fault the classic rim on a you know, touring rig. Again, cheap. Um, so I got these on like a show special. Um, I love them. You can't go wrong with them if you're nah, looking, looking for a right. cheaper tire. I cannot recommend the Falcons altogether. I mean, even still, they're not the cheapest on the market, but they're certainly not the worst. Yeah, no, it's definitely worst tires, mate. I mean, oh, you yeah. testament, mate. Two years, they've still got great tread on them. They go everywhere where you want to go to. So and that's it. I just point it in days. the direction, and off they go. Happy days, mate. Well, since we're down here, let's, um, I suppose, whip around the back and I suppose talk about your suspension, which is my old suspension setup. Yeah. <laughs> let's get into it, eh? Let's go. So, mate, here we are, the back of the vehicle. I suppose the last part we're going to have a look at because I'm looking at some pretty cool stuff. We've got the air tank here. Yeah. We've got your, uh, obviously, Flash air hose. Air fitting. A few little uh, lighty boys under here. Right. Iron Man suspension. Yeah. Old dump at the diff. Mate, let's go through it. Let's go through everything. Oh, so easy. So in terms of suspension, I do have that Iron Man two-inch foam cell lift with three hundred constant in the rear. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, it was great for the first year. Yeah. And now it's sort of not performing how I'd like it to. Um, bit, sad. bit rough. But I look insane now. I mean, it, it, it does the job. I just more or less haven't found a reason to replace it yet yeah. until I can sort of afford something, you know, flash as and new. But I don't really know what I want to go with next either. Yeah. Okay. There's like a million and one things. I want to do airbags, but not. And I was thinking, you know, I could do airbags in the in the back to sort of level, be able to level it out. Um, Take a bit of pressure off the lease, yeah. and then sort of go for something a bit fatter in the front. Yeah. Um, but insane. It's it's not bad, but it's not great. Mm. It's just sort of suspension. Just does now. the job, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Gets me from A to B. I mean, I just know it is. You know, with a little bit weight, it's hard to get that right weight. Yeah. Whether it's too heavy or too light, you know, you go over a speed bump and you go... Doo -doo -doo -doo. Yeah, you just you bottom know. out and all the rest of it. Yeah, you start getting a bit of elevation in the rear. Um, apart from that, obviously you've got the old three-inch dump pipe behind, uh, sorry, in front of the diff. Yep. Um, it's two and a half. It's factory two-inch basically to the driver's door and then a $100 eBay dump pipe. Love the note that comes out of it. Get that real... Noise. I always have one of those in my before I put the fringe on it. Yeah, it does the job. I mean, I will have a three inch in the near future. Yeah. Um, but you know, but it does the job, right? Exactly. Turns heads. Yeah, um, absolutely. Reverse lights. These came with the tray. I have no idea what they are. Mate, I had these. I've actually got one or two of these on the back of my canopy. Oh, they yeah. are eBay specials. You get them for 10 bucks. Mate, they do the job. They're insanely yeah. bright. Come on with reverse. I want to 
get a permanent like on off switch where I can manually switch them on uh, for like camp fights oh, or whatnot. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, but in saying that, you know, not bad. Um, as we talked about, we're in the cab. We do have that air tank here. Yep. All the air hose and fittings. Uh, it's been a while since I've actually ran it. I was thinking of mounting it in the back here. It's just finding a spot to mount it. And this is actually quite, you know, sort of thin sheet metal. It's only like a little two mil sign, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. yeah it's so tiny what, as. What you probably could do is... Um, oh, yeah. I was going to mount like something on the bottom here. Just put a connector. And I then... was thinking about it. Mm. It's just, again, one of those things that... One of those weekend jobs, right? Exactly. If I ever get a weekend, I'll probably do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not camping. I mean, that's exactly. the problem. You, you, you think about all these cool things you do in your car. They're like, oh, yeah, I'll do it this weekend. But then you want to go camping. So it's like... Catch 22. Problem with working in a camping shop as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're exactly. working when everyone else is camping. Exactly right. Um, also on the back here, Super Center nineteen dollar recovery hitch. Or back when they were nineteen dollars. Does the job. Um, also got the obligatory uh, K and N and Go Camping sticker on the back. That's the go. Uh, there's that reverse camera I was talking about. Love that thing. Another Super Center special. Just more or less peace of mind when you're looking back. Yep, does the job. Um, wheel bag that we talked about with one too many tins. Yep. Um, obviously this big, huge recover, yeah. uh, sorry, um, tow bar, tow right? assembly, this thing, I'm okay leaving it there for the time being. I want to, I would get something like an X bar that sits up a bit higher, but in saying that, oh, the X sort of the, bar. yeah, yeah. The, so the, what's it called? The one with like the one ARB sells with the red hooks on the car. Oh yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Be, I don't they don't make them. them for, unfortunately my car, I, I'd figure something out. I just. It's more or less peace of mind because this thing's huge. It can take a licking and keep on ticking. It's. I remember taking mine off um, when I put the powerful bar on it, and it is a heavy, big, big yeah. bit. Like these things are. It's rated for three tons. I'm pretty sure this is a three ton one. Yeah. They are a big bar. Oh, and that's the thing. I mean, I tow every so often, so it's not that peace of mind that I can actually tow something with a bit of weight in it. Yeah, for sure. Um, Crazy thing is like three bolts, eh? Four bolts. Yeah. <laughs> that holds this all together, but. Um, no, nah, they're a... Um, Protecting me when I got rear-ended, so... I was going to say, yeah, heat protection, so mm. um, you're safe in that bit. And I can see from in the middle of your car, you still have the two-piece tail shaft. Did you get much of the shutter when you were... No. Lifted the car? No shutter. No sh I've had... What's it called? The uni joints. I've had the uni joints go once. Yep. Um, but still the two-piece tail shaft. Perfect. I mean, it doesn't happen to everyone. That's the weird thing. It mm. just doesn't... It's, it's, it's such Depends a Depends on thing. the age of the vehicle, I guess. Age of the vehicle, what you got on it, the height. Because mm. you, you can get a 50 mil lift, but it might not be a 50 mil lift on your car because you have too much weight on it. So it does obviously drop down based on a few different variables. So you might just be in that sort of perfect zone where... It's settled now. And even mm. when it sat higher, back when I had the tub on it... Um, you know, before it came right down, yeah, not a, no shutters, Didn't nothing, get it. perfect, no man. noise. It was uh, dead silent. I, I did hear about that, and that was sort of my, yeah, because oh, I got a one piece of mind. That's yeah. that's the whole reason I went for it. it was just the shutter was just horrible. <laughs> um, when you're taking off, you just get that <laughs> through the whole cabin, and it's, it just doesn't feel good. Like it's not a good thing. So, no. ah, perfect, man. So, uh, I mean, airbags possibly in the future. Yeah, airbags in the rear. I'd probably you know have some valves on the back here, a bit of control in the cab. Yeah. Hey. Um, but again, it's all one of these sort of wish lists. Again, it's, if yeah. it's not broke, I'm not going to replace it. Yep. Um, I mean, I'd probably say if I could hand on the suspension to someone else, like a young fellow or something like that, that's just getting into the industry, man, sweet, I would be happy doing that. Mm. But again, I am that young fella getting into the industry at the moment, <laughs> so we're day. still there. Yeah. Um, but when you get there, I suppose, hit up um, Jacob and Benny, they yeah. they know their gear, so um, yeah, if you're going to put airbags on it. Yeah, I mean, I I still rate mine highly, and and the whole thing about trod and snapping and that kind of stuff is just just dumb because yeah. it's what you do to the car and how much weight you put on it. So, uh, well, testament two years, and I've never had a drum with. I've towed three times behind that thing, had stuff in the back. It's about what you put those airbags at, exactly, and allow your actual suspension to do its job. Exactly. Don't just pump them up to forty psi. So, because you will destroy stuff very quickly if it's just sitting on the chassis. No, awesome, man. I like it. It's uh, simple, clean. Um, so, yeah, maybe maybe possibly Dobbinson, something like that, if you yeah, upgrade I've in the future. Yeah, I've heard really good things about Dobbinson's. I'd, yeah, same. More or less. I mean, living in WA, we've got some really good, you know, sort of companies here. Um, mm. And I'd go see the boys at Malaga Suspension, sort of, yeah, you know, yeah. get, get around the industry and see what people are doing, see what, you know, really excites sort of me. Bits of bobs, yep. Yeah, and I think, you know, I'm a firm believer of when you find something, you'll know. Yeah. That's the thing. I think, you know, I just got to sort of, when I'm ready to look, I'll just start looking and yeah, off mate, we go. That's exactly right, mate. That is exactly right. 
All right, well, um, I think, I mean, I think we've covered a lot. I don't think there's much left we can sort of talk about. Nice. So um, let's talk about, I suppose, a little bit about yourself. And um, if I'll drop you a few questions and that kind of thing, you can sort of answer them. Your, yeah. your top mods to do the Triton, since we both own, own them. Yep. We can um, talk about all that cool stuff. So uh, yeah, let's get to that. Rock and roll. Uh, all right, mate. So uh, end of the video. Mate, Here we are. We made it. We, uh, we did make it. A couple of beers later, we, um, we got there. But uh, I suppose the big thing is, um, I suppose I want to ask you a few questions about the car, um, yep. so the viewers can get a bit of an idea about how, why you went with certain things and that kind of thing. Yep. Um, so one mod that you could do to a Triton that um, you would just recommend to anyone that's on this other side of the camera, potentially watching the video, maybe they're 16, want to buy their first car, yep. what, would you, what was the first thing you did to it? First thing I did within two hours of buying the car, I went and bought a brand new head unit. Um, yep. Head units that come standard in the MNs are a bit how you going. I mean, like, they do the job, yeah. but they're just not. I mean, look, if I like music, you know, most people do. Um, it's just one of those things that you're going to get a much better sound from it. Standard speakers, mint, yep. um, but just for, you know, Bluetooth connectivity, a little bit clearer radio, AM, FM. Um, and just they make the car look a little bit cooler as well. Mine's red, so get you know goes with the, ten uh, extra horsepower. Plus it goes with the standard lights. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Everything just ties in. It makes the whole system look shit ton cleaner. Mm, absolutely, man. And it's probably the one thing I did in my car when I first got it is um, you've got um, I actually went with an eBay special. It was like one hundred and fifty bucks or whatever, but that had GPS. It had you know all your stereo connections in it. it had a exactly. reverse camera, which is perfect. Um, which is great on cars like these because they're so long. But, um, but yeah, I still reckon, yeah, stereo is definitely up there with one of the best mods you can do to them. Yeah, it's, it just makes that whole drivability experience so yeah. much nicer. I mean, if Absolutely. you're doing hours on the road, you're going to want something good to listen to. I mean, most of us at the best of time can't really sit in silence. So. No, nah, no, nah, it's not any good. And if you've got, nah. as I said, big muddies on there, you want to drown that out with some, exactly. you know, with some awesome tunes. So that's a bit of cold doing, chisel. Right? Yeah, a bit of chisel, mate. <laughs> <laughs> can't go wrong. Mate, can't, definitely can't. <laughs> can't go wrong with a bit of chisel, mate. Absolutely. Yeah, oh, mate. Don't make me get the red hot chili peppers out. Yeah, now we're talking campfire with red hot. <laughs> That's camping. So, let's say... Fuck off camera. So, let's say um, uh, exterior mods or let's yep. say an off-roading mod. What would you do first for an off-roading mod? Off-roading mod... If you got no lift, nothing like that, probably just tires. Mm. Um, obviously, you're going to have a little bit more grip and stuff like that. Um, again, traction is like first and foremost. You can have a gung ho Y62 or a 200 series with you know eight whole cylinders of power. Mm. But at the end of the day, if you've got slicks, you're going nowhere, especially yeah, sand, here, rock, like... mud, nothing. You know, I'd go, you know, factory tires. You've got plenty of guard to fill. So go as big as you can before you have to go lift. Obviously, if you've got a lift, go bigger tires. Mm -hmm. um, good all terrain. You know, I raved about the Falcons. You're on the Toyos. I've heard pretty good things about BFG, um, Max all Tracks, tires, and stuff yeah. like that. Right, it more comes down to your budget. But yeah, first thing I'd probably do is like an off road mod. Yeah. New tires. Just they're going to get a little bit more life out of the vehicle, especially on road. You're going to get a fair bit more grip as well. Mm. You know, a little bit safer to drive. You're going to feel quite planted, especially if you get something that's a bit wider as well. Your car feels a le little bit less like a roller skate and more like a skateboard. Yeah, and you've got that different offset in your rims as well, which exactly. gives you a bit of tra bigger track. So exactly. um, definitely makes you more planted off, you know, off road and on road as well. So more stability. Mm, no, nah, I can agree with that, man. Uh, yeah, it was probably one of the first things I did to my car. I, I had some wicked high flies, Chinese Ching Chong buddy tires, <laughs> and they were so average. Like they were beyond average. But um, yeah, I upgraded those to the the Maxxis tires. Going back a couple of years now, but um, yeah, yeah first thing I did two six five seventy five on a sixteen. They were awesome tyres, and they filled up the guards perfectly on like a stock lift. But obviously, once you go two lift, I reckon go straight to a thirty three, yeah. two eighty five, and a sixty five. Yeah, you can fit you can fit thirty threes pretty much straight away with a two inch. A little bit of scrubbing, um, but again, you can sort of chop yeah. that sort of Take thing out. Take your mud out. flats off, and you're pretty much ready to rock and roll. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah nice man. Whatever gets you down the road into the pub. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> Whatever gets you down to the camping site. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now a campsite with a pub. There we go. Yeah, now there we're talking. Now we're talking. Maybe we should do a, uh, like a keg in the back of your car. Chilled keg. Oh, well now you've just ruined the surprise. <laughs> For the canopy. Yeah. <laughs> Inbuilt keg, that'd be the go. Taps uh, on the back. Yeah, sure, yeah. That'd be the, that'd be the ticket. 
So um, I suppose for yourself, what's what's next on the agenda? Are you uh, adding anything to it? Are you pretty much happy where you're at? I'm really happy where I'm at. I think it's more or less just sort of... Bits and bobs. Yeah, I've, I've done all your big ticket on bull bar, canopy, lift, wheels. You know, that's mm. sort of your, your, your piece of the resistance. Um, probably next thing would be getting maybe a little bit more power out of it. But in saying that, I'm quite happy with where it sits. I mean... Yep. I don't think I've done to it really power wise. This is a you know, high flow sort of air filter. Yeah, the Canon, um, yeah. Could go for something like a, a tune or something like that. But again, I could go airbags. I could go new head unit on the inside. But I think everything just works. And I've sort of got that mentality if it if it's not broken, don't fix it. Yeah, it's a good it's, way to have it. You know, I've spent the money. I don't want to have to spend the money again. Yep. Um, but in saying that, you know, there's a few things that have sort of deteriorated over time. Um, but whether it be this car or the next build, I'd probably say, you know, if I'm going to do it once, I'm going to do it right. Mm. And if that means saving up for six months more and running, you know, lesser quality gear, then they have at it. It's, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, it's a smart way to use your money, man. Um, yeah, exactly. Especially like um, like perfect example like let's say go camping an overlanding store, um, if you save up for potentially like a month extra instead of spending the money on a front lock you know front locker you might use one percent of your operating exactly. experience, you can actually get like a really nice sleeping bag or you can get a really nice swag or something exactly. that's actually going to make your camping experience more actually enjoyable. Exactly. Exactly. As many you know beers you have at night, if you have a bad sleep at a campsite, you're pretty average the next day. So you want to make sure that you're sleeping on a nice swag, good mattress, good sleeping bag, um, keeps you warm in winter. And uh, yeah, I reckon spending money on quality camping gear is a much better idea than spending stupid yep. money on lockers and you know that kind of stuff. Um, so. Everyone's done the whole paper plate, plastic knife and fork thing. But mm. you know, if it's an extra 10 minutes of cleaning up for quality gear that's going to serve you for years to come, then it's worth it. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. you just have your case and a half afterwards. Yeah, exactly. It's, you know, <laughs> You don't want to be silly when you're out there. I think it's make it more authentic and a more well-rounded experience. And you can go out, have a piss up. Yep. And But if you do it right, you go to a nice campsite, everything's just teed up. You're going to have a so much better experience. Yeah, no, for sure, man. And as I said, if you've got good quality gear, you're um, you're fluffing around less with, you know, just bad bad stuff that exactly. let you down. So um, exactly. it's a bit, of life, bit of a life lesson for everyone that's probably getting into camping is uh, spend a little bit extra for uh, the gear you want to get because it will make it last a lot longer. There's things you can skimp on, but there's other things that you just you can't. You just don't want to skimp on. Nah, for sure, man. Nah, it's been good talking to you, man. Great, great talking it's to you. Completely time. different build to mine. Um, I mean, it's the same car, but you've got a canopy and that kind of thing, which makes it a completely different. We've so. both gone different directions, but sure, hey, hey we're both hit, sitting here in the same place at the same time, so. That's it. That's it, man. Something bores you. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. But um, I suppose the big thing is uh, for you guys, obviously, sitting at home, I wanted to see a car with a canopy on the back uh, to see, you know, I'll show you guys, I suppose, um, how you can do it differently and, you know, what, what different things you can do. Declan's car had a tub like mine. And you've seen enough of my car on the channel, so we'll uh, yeah do some more builds like this and uh, show you what it's all about, how you can modify your Triton. So that's the whole point exactly. of this build series. That's so. what we're here for. And, uh, that's it. We can bring a little bit of information to you guys. I think uh, anything you can take away from it, take it away well. Yeah, perfect. All right, well, good talking to you, man. Good talking to you too. Appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. But uh, I suppose that's been another episode of 4x4 Camping Adventures. If you like this content, please like, subscribe, and comment. And uh, as always, if I don't see you in the next episode, I might see you out here in the Traction Trails. If I don't see you in the Traction Trails, I should see you later. Bye. So easy. Cheers.